Hello, I'm Tim Bevan from Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust. Today we've come to the Cotswolds to talk about soils. I know we've used soils for thousands of years to grow food, but they also deliver these very useful public goods. They can hold on to water and prevent flooding. They can hold on to carbon to mitigate climate change. And they can also help hold water in times of drought and let a crop grow. But through continuous cropping, we've actually reduced uh, our soil's ability to do these things, and mainly because we've reduced soil organic matter. Now this has led to soil erosion in many instances, and we're now looking at ways that we can improve soils and improve our management of soils. So we've come to talk to Ian Boyd of Whittington Lodge Farm about the practices he uses on his farm, we may call them regenerative farming practices, to improve soil health and improve soil management. Hello Tim. Hello Ian. Good to see you. And you. Now tell me Ian, what crop have we got in this field? Now this is spring barley, so let's go and take a look. Thank you. Ian, this is a wonderfully healthy looking crop of spring barley. How did you manage to grow this? Back in 2015, when I was a conventional farmer, this field had a legacy of black grass. Uh, so we sold it to a herbal lay, and it's been four years as the herbal lay, which we've uh, cropped and now this spring we planted spring barley and you can see we've got a virtually weed free crop and we've got a spring barley crop that's growing away and it looks good. Now this is wonderfully free of disease um, and weeds, how did you achieve that? When you're not applying f uh, nitrogen fertilizers disease is far less of an issue. And now can we, let's go and have a look at one of your fields of herbal lazy and... Yep, let's go and see. Well, Ian, this looks quite amazing. Um, can you tell me exactly what you've, what you've put into this herbal lay? Uh, in the seed that went to this herbal lay, there's five species of grass, there's five species of uh, legumes and five herbs, which gives a very biodiverse mix. One of the favorite plants is the samphoin, which has a beautiful pink flower, which I shall grab one back here. This is the real Cotswold variety, so it has so many special properties. It fixes nitrogen in the soil, it's got high levels of panning to stop, to stop bloating the cattle, uh, and it's also got worming properties to help control worms in the cattle too. And the cattle really seek it out. Uh, we've also got a lot of clover. We've got this is um, forage burnet here with these flower heads. But it, this is a real biodiverse mix. And from our point of view with our cattle, this, this helps the health of the cattle with, because they're eating so many different species and it helps add flavor to the beef we sell. So while we're talking about this mixture, what, what benefit do you think this has given to wildlife as well? Have you seen any, do you think you've seen any improvements in wildlife on your farm? Uh, hugely so. Mm. So this is the, the deer and the hare love to eat this. Um, we get a lot of skylarks that nest in it. You get a huge amount of bird song here too. Have you noticed pollinators using the flowers? When the flowers come out, the, the bees are really attracted to all the clover and all the flowers. So yes, yes, it, it has a hugely beneficial effect. And, and tell me now, how, how has this fitted into your, and has benefited your farming system here at Whittington? 
When we first went into this system, we bought a, a herd of pedigree Hereford suckler cows, and so they utilize all the grass. This is either grazed or we make it into haylage, and it all fits wonderfully. So what we've come to talk about is the benefits this can have on soil. So can you show me sort of how this has benefited the, the soil on your farm? Yes. Now, this is a very stony part of the field, so we're going to go somewhere where there's a valley bottom, where, there's a bit, where it's easier to dig. OK, here we've got to a valley bottom, so we'll have a bit more soil to dig here. So, let's see what we've got. Oh, still, some still some stones. Still, always <laughs> stones in the Cotswolds. Yeah. So, now we can break this up. So what up. are you looking for in, in, in this soil now? So right now I'm looking for earthworms, and we found about six now in this sample. But also, I mean, it's looking at, at, at the structure of the soil. So we're looking, you know, it, it's very friable. Uh, and also we're looking that so many of these soil uh, particles are attached to the root. So the, the root exudates mm. are really into the soil and they're, they're, they're drawing on the soil for their nutrients. You can see with the soils here that um, what Ian was talking about is, is calling them friable, but they break down into um, uh, what we call aggregates or crumbs and it's important that you have this crumb structure and what Ian's talking about is exactly right you need something to stick and hold that together which are things like root exudates but also the secretions from other things in the soil such as fungi and bacteria also uh, give these sticky, re really sticky substance um, things uh, like polysaccharides that hold the soil together in this structure when you lose that, the soil collapses and becomes very difficult to grow a crop because the root hairs can't get in between the, 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 the you get into the air spaces and the water spaces. So the, these aggregates are really important in a healthy soil. So digging this up, we've come across half a dozen earthworms here, and these are the ultimate soil engineers who are going to um, make make the tunnels through the soil. They're going to eat any vegetative native matter. Um, and they will provide so much fertility for the soil. One of the benefits of um, growing these herbal lays is the way they structure the soil so that any water infiltrates down into the strata and in a big rainfall events it doesn't run off over the surface. So right, we, we've talked about flooding but we're, we're in the summer where we're experiencing droughts and we're expected to, to see more droughts, how do these herbal leaves perform in, the, in these dry conditions? We've just been through two very dry summers and it's been most noticeable how the herbal leaves have kept on producing, especially plants like this chicory with a very big deep root and the sand foin. We've kept grass in front of us for the cattle throughout the driest of periods, whereas the grass was just burning up. to see these wonderful Hereford cattle, uh, great to have a native breed. How do these fit in with your farming system? Uh, the farming system, they fit in brilliantly. They're native Hereford cattle, so they're really well suited to this terrain. And also they, they eat brilliantly, with their real flavour. Uh, but we need the cows to eat our grass, our herbal lays, our wildflower meadows, so that we can improve the soil. Absolutely intrinsic. And if you've got cows, then you also need farmers to look after them. So farmers are an absolutely essential part of caring for our countryside and our mm -hmm. soils. And mm -hmm. um, what do you think about then the landscape? What, 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 what do we need to look after that? Uh, well, just like this. Yes. Cows yes. <laughs> and all sorts. And farmers. <laughs> and farmers. Yes. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Uh, so Ian, what have been the benefits to you uh, of, of having these very high organic matter soils? Uh, as an organic farmer, it's essential to have high levels of organic matter so that you've got crops, decent crops. It's, there's, no, there's really no alternative. 
So it replaces your, your use of fertiliser. Absolutely, you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, the government are proposing a new environmental land management scheme, which is all about public money for public goods. How do you think that will affect you and how will it affect other farmers? Frustratingly, we don't have the details, mm -hmm. but we do know the general direction. The general direction is to encouraging soil organic matter, more biodiversity, purer water leaving the farm, having a lower carbon footprint. Uh, and that's been flagged up for some time now. But uh, probably almost more importantly than what we might get from Elms, it's the, the agricultural supply chain is looking to decarbonize and I think there's going to be greater and greater pressure for when you're selling your product they want to know the carbon footprint of the products they're buying and that's going to be a real driver. So interesting times ahead. Well, we know the direction, we don't know the detail, but I think farmers have got to start preparing themselves to get the mindset change for, for how the future is going to be. Ian, thank you very much. It's been a very informative day. I've learned loads, and I'm sure anybody else who watches this film will learn lots too. And let's hope some of these practices get replicated across the country. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you too. Fascinating day that was spent with Ian, learning about the way he manages his farm and how he's improved the soil health in the process. He's improved the biodiversity underneath the soil and this has helped support the biodiversity above the soil. So here at Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust, we would like to help farmers and landowners emulate what Ian has done and to improve the soil health management on their farms. 